One thing you must learn to do consciously is to learn how to talk to God. Learn it. Study the scriptures. Hear how the fathers, the patriarchs of old, how they communed with God. It's not something you do carelessly. If you study Revelation chapter 4 from verse 11, you will see one of the most graphic protocol of engaging the presence of God. These are elders in the spirit. That means they have understood how to interact with the realms of glory. They understand the protocols, the sensitivity. They know how to commune. In fact, you know, John stumbled into this sacred assembly. He thought he was attending church on earth. And suddenly he saw a boisterous procession of ancients. You know, at first he didn't even know what they were doing. He now discovered that the whole activity in the room was focused on the glory that was on the throne. That was when he understood what existence was about. Let's read that scripture from verse 1. When you come into God's presence, don't take it for granted. And one of the things you must cool yourself deliberately to do is to know how to talk to God. Learn it. In fact, one of the strongest weapons of priesthood is utterance. Utterance is not just for preaching. The major purpose of utterance is to give you ability to commune with deity. Because there are languages that are ancient. For you to talk to an immortal spirit, they are codes. So that you can make him open his oracles to you. And it's on the strength of that access he grants you that you come to high places in the spirit. And so if you are growing in God, this is one of, this is one of the reasons we study the Bible. To learn spiritual protocols. When the guy was carried to heaven, he said, After this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, come up hither. I will show thee things which must be hereafter. He, he's trying to open him up to the future. But he had to take him to the past. Because the spirit realm is the foundation of reality. He says, so come to the past so that we can show you the future. <laughs> And immediately, I was in the spirit. So when the guy was talking to him, it was not to educate him only. It was also a transport medium. As he was hearing, he was journeying. And before he realized, when the speech was over, he discovered he was in the spirit. And he said, and behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. He now started showing us the activities that took place around the throne. See what he said. This will help you when you come to God's presence. It will help you. He said, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. I don't have time. I would have spoken to you about the seven things that rule the presence of God. One of them are crystals. 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 You can't see God except you look through the crystals of light. That's why God is a mystery. You know the way the diamond functions. When somebody is wearing a diamond earring, what you see is what the, the, the earring refracts. So the excellency of the diamond is the fact that it has the power to absorb light, bend it, and channel it in another direction. So the reason you see diamond glistering is its interaction with light. You know, God is light. But you need to interact with the crystals so that the dimensions of light can reach you. So when light hits the diamond, the diamond bends it and turns it in another direction. It's what the diamond refracts that you see. Those glisters. So that's how God relates. Because if the fullness of God enters heaven, heaven will collapse. So it has to transmit its dimensions in packets. Because those of us who did a bit of light, study on light, we know that light travels in packets. We call it quantum. In plural, it's called quanta. You are seeing a ray, but those are packets. So God releases those packets, and then the crystals trap it, and they emit it into heaven. So when the elders are bowing down, it is the different dimensions that the crystal emits that they interact with. So they honor it. They look up. Another, they honor it. That's what's going on. So he said, he saw God clothed with, you know, jasper and sardine as stones. They are crystals. Precious stones. That's what God wore. 
when he sat on the throne. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. He's just trying to show you a little things about the glory. Ah! We need to enter some realms. You know, earth is a distraction. And the devil wants to trap us here from seeing hollow things. You now go to a beach in Miami. You see, this is the most beautiful place in the world. You have not seen anything. There are realms you will enter. The beauty will, will enter you. It will change your cells. Your molecular structures will be altered. So when you come back, even you will not be the same. When Moses saw and came, his eyes became like the sun. These are some of the things happening here. And he said, And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon them I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. All of these things have purpose and meaning. Those white garments speak of purity. It's one of the laws of the presence. It's a protocol. If your garment is not pure, you can't stay in the presence because the presence is the government of God. And the crown speaks of authority. You have, you have to be a ranking being to be there. And you see, what these guys did is what will marvel you. Although they had thrones, which speaks of their righteousness, their placement in God. They were wearing white garments, which speaks of their purity. They were carrying crowns, which spoke of their authority. He said, when the glory appeared, they fell from the crown. They cast their crown and they worshipped. My focus is to show you their utterances so that you know they don't talk to God carelessly. He's a deity. Even men, if you talk to men in authority carelessly, it will cost you a lot of things. So when you approach God, you don't talk carelessly. Go down. Let's see their worship. The guy was still describing things. Go to verse 11. I don't have time. This place will trap me. This is not my teaching. See what they were saying. Thou art worthy, O Lord, <laughs> to receive glory and honor and power. Hope you know that if you want to study these three words they have spoken about, everything that works on earth resonates on these three things. Glory, honor, and power. This is the three stands of government. They say you are worthy of all of it. He said, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they were created. They, they, see how they are talking to God. That means creation has no meaning in itself except as it gives you pleasure. That if you are a created being, your life becomes relevant the day your life begins to give God pleasure. That's what they are saying. So they are telling God, although we look glorious, but our, our existence is useless. It's the degree to which you give you pleasure that gives value to us. Not the car you drive. Not the clothes you wear. You can be driving the most expensive car on earth. Where it matters, you are useless. Unless your life gives glory to God. And if you don't realize it, the day you too, you are summoned like John, you will come out of your body. This body, you were kept there. That's why you are inside. You were kept here. If God say, come, <laughs> you will see that the garment will leave you. You will step out and you will be invited to where you came from. That's when your real value will be defined. And one of the things that will define you is the extent to which, the extent to which your life plays God. So your 80 years on earth can be useless if it doesn't please God. Your $10 billion can be useless if it doesn't please God. So these guys gave us a code, a code that governs relevance in creation. In just one worship, they captured what government represents, glory, honor, and power. In one statement, they captured who God was as creator, as far as this realm is concerned. And in that same statement, they captured the meaning of life and existence. That's called utterance. This type of thing, you don't pick it in the Bible school. It comes by inspiration. That a man can say something and the whole existence can resonate on it. That's why you can't just come to God and say, thank you, Jesus, I love you, and go away. No. Sometimes when you come, be still. 
Just be there quietly. Honor him. Adore him. The walls will well up on your inside. The walls will come to you. It will come. And when you speak, ah, it's a holy man of God speak. As they were moved. They were moved by the spirit. They were moved. So they spoke according to the motions of the spirit. That's why their walls were eternal. How can a fisherman speak and they are studying it in Harvard till today? People are doing PhD in Petrine uh, Doctrine. The writings of Peter. They are doing PhD on it. They spoke as they were moved. Make sure your prayer time is rich. Don't choke your prayer with, uh, oh Lord, give me food. <laughs> there are some sacred things that should come out of your lips. And when they come, they become part of the raw material for creation. Forever and ever, they can no longer go back. And they will give relevance to creation. Some of the things you say is why some people will have encounters. Some of the things you say is why the move of God can visit a territory. But those walls can't come through you. We were created as channels for God to find expression. So some of the things he wants to say to himself, the Holy Ghost will route it through you. So when you are talking, God is nodding. That is who I am. He is worthy. You know, they started by saying you are worthy. So it's not pride for him to say, yes, that is me. He is worthy. Don't pray carelessly. Spend time. It's a school. to teach on priesthood but that's not my topic this night I'm on a series so let me stay with it's a body but let me stay here I did a teaching in Kenya on priesthood I showed the seven layers of priesthood one of it is utterance you know people don't know priesthood they think priesthood they just come and start praying <laughs> there are men that if they talk before God he can give them a nation and say take this is your inheritance Take it. I give it to you as a gift. This nation belongs to you because they spoke. Why do you think the Bible says from the time of John, the whole era was wielded to him. This era is your time. We call it John. 
<laughs> People inherit things in God. They know what to say. Negotiating things and God will say, okay, I changed my mind. Abraham, go and study Genesis 18. Let my Lord not be offended. He said, far be it from the God of righteousness. How can it be heard? <laughs> and God will say, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> not because he changes, but when men change, he is responding the way he was responding because of the men. Now, a new set of men has have appeared. So, a new dimension will have to come out. We need to learn some things. Maybe when I finish this series, I'll do priesthood here. Priesthood. You know the seven, so that your prayer will have weight. 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 Posture is a realm in priesthood. Posture. There is a level you get to in priesthood that you lie down flat. You can't look up. Because of the weight of reverence that is on you. Weight. The presence of God becomes so close. And the posture you sustain becomes the worship. And that posture has utterance in the spirit. The way you lie down. That's what the 20 and 4 elders were doing. They are not just have hazard. No. Posture is a weight. It's a molecule in priesthood. It's heavy. It can be felt. Why do you think the Bible said the lifting up of our hands is as the evening sacrifice? So there's a place you get to in God when you carry those hands up. It's like a thousand burnt offerings. God is perceiving an aroma from your hand. 